Hi, my name is Dan Krause, and I'm an attorney at Krause Estate Planning and Elder Law Center, where we help elders and their loved ones preserve assets against taxes, predators, and the long-term care costs that devastate many families. Today, I want to talk a bit about capacity or the uh, mental ability of someone to create an estate plan. Now, there's different kind of capacity, the capacity to do high level math or the capacity to be an Olympic athlete, um, etc. But there's one specific type of capacity that uh, my clients are very concerned about often. And uh, it's very important in my field, and that is the capacity to create an estate plan. It's well established that capacity to create a will <clears throat> is the same as the capacity to do other estate planning. So that would be the same as the capacity to create a power of attorney, to create a trust, um, to create a health care document, etc. And many people, <clears throat> excuse me, have a, um, <clears throat> a misunderstanding of what the capacity is. The capacity to create a, an estate plan is what I consider to be a fairly low capacity. So you don't have to be completely with it. <clears throat> you can have gone down a little bit of the slope that many of us go down towards the end of life um, and still have the capacity to do an estate plan. <clears throat> I want to dispel um, a misconception that a lot of people have is that when somebody's health care power of attorney is activated, by two doctors who say they're no longer capable of making their own medical decisions. This does not mean that a person is necessarily unable to do estate planning. So I want to repeat that just because your power of attorney for healthcare has been activated by two doctors, it does not necessarily mean that you are incapable now of legally creating any more estate planning documents because the standard of capacity is different for both of those. Now, let's talk about the standard of capacity for somebody to create an estate plan. You really need to only know two things. Um, one thing is you need to know who's your family. So are you married? Is your spouse alive or dead? Uh, do you have children? Are any of them deceased? Um, what are their names? these kind of things. Um, fairly basic, although some people eventually lose the ability to know those things. The second thing that you need to know in order to have capacity is what are your assets. So you have to know what you own. Now, if you owned a farm 50 years ago and you believe you still own that farm, then maybe you don't have capacity. But if you have an idea about what your real estate assets are, what your banking assets are, what your investment assets are, um, and any other major assets, uh, if, you, if you know what those are. Even if you only know it some days for a half an hour, uh, some days are good days, some days are bad days, as long as when you are creating this document, as long as when you're making the decision and signing a document, like a power of attorney, a will, a trust, then as long as you have that capacity at that time, it's a legally signed document. Now, this is something that is argued about quite a bit after someone passes away, whether they had capacity or not, and it's a, it can be just a big mess. Um, so it's important to do estate planning before there's a question, but it's not completely out of the, out of the realm of what is possible or what is legal if you wait and um, until it's in the gray area. It's risky, but um, estate planning is better than no estate planning. So that's a little bit about capacity. Um, if you are concerned about your capacity or the capacity of your parents and you think that they may be sliding past the point where they uh, can do estate planning, you should act sooner rather than later, call a good estate planner and if you're not sure that you know a good estate planner you can give our office a call 608-268-5751 thank you very much